There's been a lot of talk lately about the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland at the CERN Research Facility. I know that's a mouthful, but uh, there's been all kinds of talk about all different types of things, some end times related. I've done a little bit of research into it myself for different reasons. And now I'm not a scientist, I'm not a physicist, I'm a pastor. But I read some stuff about this and I, I took away some life application that, that may be beneficial to you. And plus, I kind of geek out over that type of stuff. I know some of you out there, too, love to read that type of thing. But the Large Hadron Collider is one of, you know, 20 or so tests they're, that they're doing at the CERN facility in Geneva, Switzerland. The Large Hadron Collider specifically, they're looking for, as best as I can tell, now don't quote me on all the science aspects, but what I read, they're looking for forces and particles and bosons and some other things that they can't find, but, but they think that they're there because it fits their standard model. In other words, they have a standard model, physicists do, where there's four forces, gravity, uh, electromagnetic energy, um, weak and strong forces. And again, don't quote me on all these exact terms, but then there are leptons and quarks. Not leprechauns, but leptons. Now, they're kind of waiting for some leprechauns to show up, and what I mean by that is this. What they're doing is they're in about a 17-mile long track. They are accelerating particles in two different directions, and at some point, they will merge the tracks and collide the particle streams in hopes that it will break apart at the smallest level the subatomic particles that they can observe in hopes that these forces that make everything work together based on their standard model will show up and begin to arrange and organize and develop and team life out of the chaos that they've created. So there is this whole kind of order out of chaos vibe going on with that. Some of you may have read about that. I don't want to focus on that. What I'm looking at is they can't seem to understand that there is an intelligent force that makes all of this work together and at a certain level they're not going to be able to discover or find or measure or observe what that is. Hebrews 1 and Colossians 1 say it this way, that God upholds all things by the word of his power. Now they're looking, essentially what they're doing is taking watch parts. Imagine a watch and you take all the pieces apart and you put them in a box and you shake them until they all bounce around and collide in hopes that you open the box and there's an assembled watch in there and then there's also information in there that tells you what showed up and put all those pieces together. That's what they're looking for. Now the physicists have a problem because the model that they have now they either need to find these hidden particles and forces or they have to admit that there is an intelligence behind why everything works together. So you go back to the scripture that says that God upholds all things by the word of his power. Now that word word there is very interesting. It's the word rhema. But rhema is not just a spoken word. The word rhema in the Greek is, is, has a past tense meaning but it's still continually effective. It's like the word that was spoken and the sound of that word continuing on is what's holding things together. To me, it sounds more like singing. It's like God is singing over the universe and his continual audible voice singing from that spirit place that he exists into and onto and through our physically created universe actually holds it together and makes it work. It's like his observance of the universe and his intelligence of how he designed it to work is holding it together and making it work. Now, he gave us dominion over this planet. So even though he is holding everything together externally, with this planet, it's like he's, he's holding it together and then he put us in the middle of it and said, okay, now take care of it take care of the land, take care of the resources, love one another, walk on this planet and honor me. Wait a minute, what are you doing with all this sin stuff? Oh great, now you've produced death. So he's holding it together, but he gave us freedom to do whatever we want in the middle of it. Now that will end at some point, praise God, there will be a resurrection and there will be no more death, no more darkness, no more sin, no more sickness, and I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, 
God is holding it together, but He's influencing us just like He is holding the universe together. His spiritual influence can come through a human heart and into our lives and make our lives work together. See, our lives are not like scientific experiments in that we are just subject to the laws of nature. Physicists have realized that this world actually responds to mankind. God designed this world to respond to the presence of humans. All of creation is groaning and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's waiting for us to manifest our sonship. So this word rhema got me thinking about another aspect of the theory that these guys have, and it's called string theory. String theory says that Everything that exists, everything physical that exists, or light-based or sound-based or anything on some level is either particle or wave, but it's all made up of little strings or little circles. And they vibrate on different energies and different levels. And depending on the vibration, it causes different strings to come together and form different things. So all of matter and everything that's within the universe is supposed that, well, one theory is that it's all a, a group of small, tiny, vibrating bundle of strings. And again, it makes me think of music. It makes me think of, uh, of something singing or something giving a frequency to those strings to vibrate to be what they are. Now, if that theory is true, what if we would allow God to sing through our hearts into our lives, into our worlds, and those strings would then vibrate based on His input. Now that's just a kind of a philosophical way of saying, as we yield to Him, His, His blessing is established in our lives. See, in that spirit place, He's given us everything that pertains unto life and godliness. But we have kind of a scientific large Hadron Collider type faith. And what we do is we throw some money in a box and shake it up and hope that because we gave that money, God's gonna show up and do something. We think that because we go out and pray for people, God's going to show up and do something in our lives. As if God is like a natural force that we can act upon, and then there will be an equal and opposite reaction because we acted upon Him. No, He's a spirit. There is no lack or resistance within Him that, causes, that, that, that necessitates a response based on us pushing into Him. See, he said, I don't want you having to come to me physically, carnally, like the world is created. I'm a spirit. I am love. I am light. I am complete. And then he says, here is Jesus. I will cause you to be acceptable in the spiritual dimension through his blood. And if you receive my force, if you receive my spirit, my influence, then where I exist and the quality of life that he exists within will become established into our lives. See, we're not scientists under God's domain trying to do experiments to get him to react to us. We're not trying to force a response from him. Faith receives the spirit. Faith receives the completeness that is available within Jesus. Faith looks at everything and, and has such an awe and a respect for how God created everything and realizes if I will yield to him, I can have a co-participation, a co-laboring with the Spirit of God in my life. I, I, I just want to encourage you today, open your heart. Look inward to hear and see the voice of God. God has deposited heaven within you, all the resources that he has. And he's not put you on a path where you have to do things to make him respond. He's already painted the entire picture. And it's up to us to just say yes and let him sing into our lives through our hearts, changing the way that we think so we'll be in full agreement, full harmony with him and see his blessing established in our lives.